Welcome to Parenting Unpacked, a place for parents to seek refuge with evidence, empathy, and common sense. Hosted by Dr. Siobhan Kennedy Costantini and Dr. Kristen Summer. Let's get into today's episode. Welcome back to Parenting Unpacked. You're here for a special bonus episode today, all about the secret of Santa. Now, if you've got little ears listening, please send them away because we don't want to let them in on the secret of Santa. So uh, switch it off and listen to this at another time or put some headphones in, but don't let little ears listen unless you are eager for them to understand the ins and outs of the Santa secret. Okay, are we alone? Are all the children (laughs) gone? Okay, cool. So what we're talking about today is how to navigate talking about Santa with your child. So uh, if you have come from the world of TikTok, I've had a couple of videos go viral about how we talk about Santa. Parents have asked me, how do we navigate the lie of Santa? And I mean, if you've been listening for a while, you'd know that Siobhan and I have different perspectives on lying to our children, um, predominantly around the fact that I physically cannot lie without experiencing extreme anxiety, And Siobhan is a normal person that doesn't really get bothered by it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I I mean, I suppose I very much think about the function of the lie. What is, what the, what, what am I trying to achieve with this? Yeah, exactly. So I think um, different people have different attitudes towards Santa. It really depends on their personal experience, um, finding out that Santa isn't real and feeling like their parents have deceived them. So some kids feel really destroyed by this fact um, and feel really like a lot of lack of trust in their parents after this. And other kids are just like, eh, whatever. And we kind of carry that trauma or lack of trauma with us into adulthood. So um, both of those experiences are normal and fine. But if you want to navigate talking to, to your kids about Santa in a different way, um, this episode might be for you. So um, I might ask you, Siobhan, your mm. opinion on Santa first, um, and then I'll jump in with mine. So tell me how you're going to navigate Santa with Timo. Yeah, to be honest, I have given it very little thought <laughs> because it's just not a big deal for me. Mm-hmm. I think um, for both me and my husband, Christmas is not a big myth or like it doesn't hold a lot of power over our lives we celebrate it um we and like I wonder I so I um am Catholic I was raised Catholic for me Christmas was very religious so all of the cultural stuff around Santa was just an added extra um the focus was very much on um night vigils and midnight masses being able to stay up until midnight um like having awesome food, spending time with my family. Um, Boxing Day was my granddad's birthday, so um, we got to spend lots of time with granddad. Like it was just the real focus around Christmas was family and celebration and everything else was extra. So presents was extra, um, food was extra. Um, All of like the Christmas tree, we we had one, but it wasn't a, I'm one of five children. We didn't have time to decorate the house from top to bottom. It was hard enough keeping the house clean. Um, So that was not the focus. Uh, And that is something we very much intend to carry on um, for Timo going forward. So Timo's birthday is also Boxing Day. Um, He is Timothy, named for my grandfather, Timothy, and was born on Boxing Day, Mm. coincidentally. So it's a beautiful connection. Um, But of course, adds a level of complexity when it comes to Christmas, having a birthday and a Christmas so close together, we're very much going to emphasise that Christmas is about family, not presents, um, that he'll get a few kind of functional presents, some maybe books, things like that, and that the big celebration and party will be his birthday. Um, and that's how my husband and I celebrate um, things anyway. Birthday is the celebration of the person and Christmas is a time to spend together as a family. So we'll we'll do Santa, but... It's not going to be a big to do. Cool. Well, that's um, a different approach, I guess, than what a lot of parents do. It's a very commercial holiday. Santa 
um, and gift giving, and that's totally fine. You can give your kid lots of gifts or very little gifts. Uh, Siobhan and I actually differ in terms of how many ch- gifts we give our children. I We have a lot of toys and I've bought a lot of toys because it's something that I find joy in. I need that um, stimulation for my brain to continue playing with my child. And she adores toys. She plays with everything. It doesn't matter what it is. She adores, adores playing with it. And it's not just like fancy Montessori toys. My family buys her Barbies and stuff and I ask them to. Um, and she loves them. So our Christmas is going to be very big and present heavy, um, mostly because I'm very excited. Um, so we do navigate it in different ways. But this is very unrelated to Santa. So let's get back to the topic of Santa really quickly. So the way I will navigate Santa, because I don't like to lie, um, and if you don't feel comfortable lying to your child about Santa, um, I will be explaining the myth of Santa. Um, I will explain that some children believe that Santa exists. Some people believe that Santa is this man that lives in the North Pole and creates toys for children and then brings them on um, in between Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and delivers them under your tree. Uh, and other people don't believe in this. And it's up to you what you want to believe. But everyone engages in this myth in some capacity. Uh, and we are going to uh, in- involve ourselves in it. So we are we are playing along in the Santa myth. Um, and if a child feels differently to you and says that they're that Santa is completely real and they feel that they are real, then that is that is their belief and they are allowed to have that belief and your belief is no more correct than theirs um and when she's two she won't really understand the nuance of it it'll just be semantics me saying some people believe that santa is this and she's just going to be like that's cool i'm playing pretend i love pretend play there's a fat man who's bringing me a present that's awesome but as i explain this and she grows she's going to start inspecting the way i explain things and she's going to start questioning which is beautiful. We want them to start questioning and asking questions about the world and letting that dawn on her in her own time in a way when she's ready to it. So when she's ready to um, kind of flick between what's fiction and reality, um, we will answer those questions. And if she wants to carry on the imagination and the um, pretend play part of it, she can. Um, But, yeah, I will be very... An answer ready if, like, when she comes and says, well, what do you believe? I'll just say that we don't believe in Santa and a lot of adults don't. Uh, As you grow, the um, Santa myth kind of uh, changes and it becomes about preserving that myth for the younger children and people younger than us and giving them that magic pretend play experience. So, yeah, I will tell her what I believe and that she doesn't have to believe in that. And I think this is a really important conversation to have that's really age appropriate for religion because I don't want to... um, indoctrinate her into my religion which is atheism lack of religion um if she feels that she needs that community and that belief system i will give it to her um or i will allow her to explore that on her own so i think in terms of teaching her that i have a belief and you can have a different belief and other people can have beliefs too and they can all be correct um and that we accept everyone for their beliefs is really important and i think that using the santa secret santa myth (laughs) Um, to open that conversation to an understanding of how a vehicle yeah so um, she can still enjoy it still get the magic of Christmas I mean we are going hard out for the magic of Christmas we have advent calendars we have she has one Santa present Um, we have Christmas light decorations we have the the board with like the milk and cookies thing for Santa and the magical key so she can he can get in the door because we don't have a chimney Um, yeah as like I said, did not engage in any of this stuff as a kid. Like, oh, mind you, we did have a chimney, um, and there was. I was like, but it's very skinny. How does he get down? It's like he's magic. Like, cool, that works for me. Um, we did beer and carrots because my dad didn't like milk. Um, yeah, and like, just I think there wasn't much questioning. It, I think it helped that I was the middle of five children, so there was just this um, collective belief, which I guess like is so interesting is that I completely respect and totally agree with your approach that this is what we believe you can believe whatever you want but I wonder like when it comes to family unit and family structure like families believe a thing so regardless of whether or not like it will be very hard if not impossible for her to distinguish her belief from yours until she's probably a teenager 
So she'll where she'll believe what you believe, whether you say to or not, really, is, is the likelihood. That's how most children develop. They believe what their parents believe until they start questioning uh, in their teen years. But I guess the, the real importance is that you've allowed room and nuance for You've, you've left the door open so that when that questioning does come in her teen years, she feels very comfortable to explore it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just about Santa or the Tooth Fairy or the Easter Bunny. It's about religion and belief systems, which are very culturally ingrained. They're very, people call it indoctrination, but it's not. It's knowledge um, uh, sharing. It's it's passing of belief systems, um, of core values and everything down the family line this is how all of human knowledge um, accumulates across millennia um, we have this we have this storytelling going from one person to another and it's very hard to disambiguate what is fact from fiction which is why belief systems religions have endured for so long but I wanted to be able to give her an understanding of the Santa myth um, in a way that meant that other people have different beliefs other people celebrate different days um, it's it, it's it's a really ambiguous thing. Some people don't have Santa at all, and some people have um, they have the three wise kings, or they have Chris Kindle, or they have Amir Naraz. There's a bunch of different um, festive figures that bring presents in different cultures. I wanted her to have an understanding that her Santa is not the right Santa, her belief is not the right belief or lack of belief. Everyone can have a belief of something. Um, oh, I wonder as well, like. Mind you, it's it's a it's in a little while, but I'd love to revisit this with you and her experience of Santa when she's seven or eight, because yeah. as we know with child development, at at that age, children start to get really black and white, and um, they in, almost indoctrinate themselves, even if mm-hmm. their parents are incredibly um, flexible and open and emphasize yeah. that there are different ways of doing things. Around mm-hmm. seven or eight, children get really, really strict about the rules, and there is yeah. a way of doing things. And we often yeah. see this with gender with children at this age. Yeah. Um, at around seven, both boys and girls get really strict about girls wear dresses, boys don't wear pink. Da, da, da. And like, even if they've been raised in a household that's incredibly open, it's mm-hmm. almost like they are learning the rules and the only way they can learn the rules if there is no room for flexibility. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, as they get older, things become more flexible and obviously this doesn't happen for all children. It's just a thing that Mm -hmm. most children tend to do. But with, like, Santa as the the specifics, I'd be really interested to see what around that age, how things go. Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting. And I I don't know. This is not something that people really explore and... People don't, uh, and I mean, Timo will go through his own version of things at that age as well. Yeah, and it's it's a really contentious topic, and science kind of struggles at capturing contentious topics, especially around religion, which is kind of the thing that we need to like discuss here because it isn't about Santa; it's about belief systems. Um, and yeah, that's the really tricky thing. Science hasn't really hammered that down yet, um, and it's it's got a lot to do with social norms. Those rules that children are strict to are social norms not just of parents but of the community around them so that's why they're very gendered um, because they're getting pressures from the groups with which they want to belong to and we know that children get more and more specific in terms of like following those norms to a t Um, but yeah anyways that is how we will approach the santa myth the santa secret Um, you have two alternative perspectives you can just not put an emphasis on it you can explain it for how it is all around the world and it's a belief system or you can do the traditional this is Santa, Santa brings presents until they figure it out on their own. None of those things are a problem. Just do what works for you. It, it, like, and whatever version your family takes, like it's all okay and it doesn't have to be one way or, or another way. Like whatever works for you and your family is the way to do it. Yeah. You get to create your own family traditions and whether you want to inherit the ones that you've experienced, whether you want to change them, all things are fine. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy. Have a wonderful festive season. I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode and we will see you on Tuesday for our next episode. See ya. See ya.